can't silence the people. I'm not a lawyer, but this is part two of the state of Florida versus Calvin Riley Sr., AKA the case of the officer opening a bottle of liquor, pouring the contents of that bottle out, and then putting the bottle back in the man's car. This is part two. Okay, so jurors are selected and the trial begins. The state does their opening statement first and makes clear to the jury what the charges in this case are and what they intend to prove about those charges. So first, driving under the influence, there's two things that the state must prove that the defendant drove or he was in actual physical control of a vehicle. The second element that, that we must prove to you today is that while driving or in actual physical control of a vehicle, the defendant was under the influence of alcohol be alcoholic beverages to the extent that his normal faculties were impaired. See, you're gonna learn throughout today's trial that impairment isn't necessarily falling on the floor drunk. It can be something as simple as your vision is affected when I take my glasses off. And then the state goes into the charge for driving with a suspended license. The second charge in today's case is that the defendant was driving with his suspended, a suspended or revoked license. Now, this charge has three different elements that we have to prove to you here today. The first element is that the defendant drove a motor vehicle upon a highway in this state. Number two, that at the time he was operating his vehicle, his license was suspended. Third, we have to prove that at the time the defendant knew that his license was suspended. State attorney goes on to say that Calvin was placed under arrest for a DUI be before the officers even got to search his car. So that bottle and what Officer Oliver did actually has no bearing on his DUI charge. You're gonna learn that the defendant told Officer Muth two things. First, that he was drinking alcohol. I believe he said that he had two beers that night. Number two, you're gonna learn that the defendant told her where he was coming from that night. It's as simple as the defendant was at Pockets Bar and Grill earlier that night. He spent the night there drinking alcohol, and then he decided to get in his car and leave. You're gonna learn that there was more than just a DUI investigation at that point. That they also decided to pull up their internal program, run a driver's license check on them, just like any other traffic stop that occurs. And when they did that, they noticed that the defendant's license was listed as suspended. So when Officer Oliver and Officer Muth see this, you're gonna learn that they go and place him under arrest. And that's where the next part starts. Now, on the flip side of that, the defense tells a different story in their opening. Calvin Riley is innocent. This case involves an officer planting evidence. It is not an innocent mistake. Officer Kirsten Oliver of the Tallahassee Police Department stopped Mr. Riley for his headlights being out. She claims she smells marijuana. The claim that she smells marijuana is what lets her search the vehicle. They of course find no marijuana, not one bit. However, it is what she does next that is truly shocking. Officer Oliver grabs a full, sealed, unopened bottle of liquor. She then pours out some, but not all of the liquid, and then tosses the bottle back into his vehicle. She then lies and tells the officers that she found an open bottle. You will learn that officers claim to initially have arrested Mr. Riley for driving while license suspended or revoked and not DUI because they didn't have probable cause for DUI when they arrested him. The defense says that the cops were initially trying to use them saying that they smell weed as the reason for the DUI charge, but when they searched the car and didn't come up with any weed, they then tried to change it to say that Calvin was drunk. And the bottle that Officer Oliver found was used as a way to substantiate the DUI charge. And that's clear because it was mentioned in the police report. If the bottle didn't matter, then it should have never been mentioned in the report. And in regards to knowing about the suspended license, the judge will instruct you that the state must prove Mr. Riley had knowledge that his license was suspended when he was driving. You will hear Officer Oliver assume Mr. Riley knew without any actual proof. Okay, so the state calls their first witness, which as to be expected is Officer Oliver. She gets on the stand and walks through what happened that night. The vehicle that I saw was traveling without headlights on. It did was traveling at a speed above 45. I advised him of why he was stopped because he requested the information and I advised him that the headlights were off. Officer Muth arrives to the scene. What happens next? 
I advised her that I believed that the defendant was under the influence and I asked her if she would go speak with him and, and see if she knew the same. So now that Officer Muth is at the scene, you have this discussion about your concerns. Does she go up to the defendant? She does. After we determine that his license is suspended, Officer Muth begins the DUI investigation. You found this vodka bottle. Was the defendant already placed under arrest at that point? Yes, he was. What was he already placed under arrest for? Driving under the influence. Was there another thing? He was also placed under arrest for driving with a suspended license knowingly. So did this vodka bottle play any decision or play any role in your decision to have him placed under arrest for driving under the influence or driving with a suspended license? No, because it was found post his arrest. So typically when I find alcohol in a vehicle, whether it's a DUI investigation or just open container, because I dump alcohol out if I find it. He was not charged with it. Um, so my intention of dumping it out was solely to dump it out and get it out of the car. That was it. And then she gets into how she determined if he received notice about the suspension or not, which basically comes down to the address he gave her verbally matched the address that she looked up in the system, which also seemed to match his actual mailing address. What did he tell you his address was? He stated that it was 429 West Brevard Street. Now, when you were looking at David and trying to determine whether or not he received notice of this, what was a present or available to you at that time? It said on his driver's license that I was able to pull up through David that his address on his license was 429 West Brevard Street. To your knowledge, today, or to your knowledge, Officer Oliver, was that the same as his mailing address? To my knowledge, yes. Here in today's courtroom, are you aware of a different mailing address? Yes, I am. It's a P.O. box. So here's the problem. Today is the first time that, that Officer Oliver is saying that these notices were actually sent to this P.O. box and not the residential address. But according to her, that's okay because on the night of the incident, Calvin handed her a document that had his P.O. box listed as his mailing address and not the Rivard address. And so since the notices were sent there and that's his mailing address, he obviously got notice. Now, I want to be clear on this. When you first stopped the defendant, were you aware of that mailing address? I was not. Okay. So walk us through your thought process when you were trying to determine if he had received notice of the suspension. So when I spoke to him earlier, he said that he was coming from 429 West Brevard Street. And when I saw the address as the residential address that's listed on his driver's license, typically that is the address that you are residing at. And so when he mentioned the address, along with the address being the same on David, his driving record, I assumed that he received the notice of his suspension at that address, and therefore he knew that his license was suspended. So to clarify, this is the document the defendant gave you? Correct. Officer, is this address on the document the defendant gave you the same address as the one that the notice of suspension was sent to? Correct. At one point, the entire body cam footage is played for the jurors. And while I'm not going to play the whole video, here is a clip between Calvin and the officers. Okay, I just have to I don't understand none of what you're saying. 
I don't want to acknowledge none of what you're saying. I, I am cohering with what you're saying. I have no knowledge to what you're saying. And you miss a uh, lot. Because I don't smoke, I don't do no drugs. And what you say, you say that you stop me because you smell weed. My name is Calvin A. Bryant Sr. I'm born and raised in Tazza, Florida. We have no to close the door yet. Now, so if you want to close the door now, I'm born and raised in Tazza, Florida. I'm 55 years old. And you are alive. So the state wraps up their direct examination, and then attorney Desiree Goodfellow gets up to do cross. And she starts off by asking Officer Oliver about Calvin Riley's demeanor that night and how she was 100% sure that Calvin was aware of the suspension on his driver's license. Riley's cooperative. Correct. He's respectful. Correct. He follows all your commands. Yes. You testified that you thought his eyes were glossy. Correct. He's wearing glasses. Correct? Yes. The, the day of, he was wearing glasses, correct? Yes. And you believe that he knew that his license was suspended? Yes, ma'am. When Officer Moose got there, you wanted her to ask Mr. Riley whether he still lived on the Prevard address, correct? Correct. And you saw that notices were sent to Mr. Riley regarding the driver's license suspension? Yes, ma'am. But you just assumed that was 429 West Brevard Street? I'm sorry, can you rephrase the question? You saw the suspensions? Yes. You saw that notices were sent? Yes. Today you testified that they were sent to a PO box. Correct. But you did a deposition, correct? Yes, ma'am. And in that deposition, you repeatedly said that the notices were sent to 429 West Brevard. Because that was my knowledge, yes. But today you're saying a different address. Correct. Because previously you just assumed that it was 429 West Brevard. Yes, ma'am. And then Desiree Goodfellow begins asking Officer Oliver many of the same questions that she asked during that deposition from video one. Of course, this time though, it's all in front of the jury. When you called Officer Muth for backup, that's because you already suspected DUI, correct? Yes, ma'am. But you weren't 100% certain it was a DUI? No, ma'am. In fact, at that point, you hadn't even smelled anything, correct? I was unsure, yes, ma'am. Any evidence of marijuana besides a smell? Yes, ma'am. Before finishing the search, you went back to that 20 gram bottle that you left on the driver's seat. Yes, ma'am. And you picked up that bottle. Yes, ma'am. You opened that bottle. Yes, ma'am. And then you put the bottle back into the car. Yes, ma'am. And has that always been your testimony? Um, I did not know that I opened the bottle in my original testimony. But now you know that you didn't steal it because you had the chance to watch your body worn camera. Yes, ma'am. And you told Officer Moose about the bottle. Yes, ma'am. And you told her that because she was the primary officer. Yes, ma'am. Because she'd be writing the report. Yes, ma'am. And you told her about the bottle because you were using it as evidence. I told her that I found a bottle of vodka in the, in the um, driver's seat. Now, whether she used it or not as evidence, that was up to her. But she only knows anything about that bottle because of you. Yes, ma'am. An open liquor bottle found inside the car within reach of the driver would be a big indicator for a DUI, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you told Officer Moose that bottle was open? No. Has that always been your testimony? I don't remember. You did a deposition, correct? I did. You swore to tell the truth? Yes, ma'am. In that deposition, did you say something different? I don't remember what I said about that. The report says that there is an open bottle, which she knows because of you. Correct? Maybe. Did you not testify earlier that the only way she would have known that it was open was from you? Either what I said or what she assumed. And you previously testified that the only way that Officer Moose would know about an open bottle was because you told her Objection it was open. An Overruled. Correct. Can you finish your question? That was a whole question. Do I need to say it again? Please. You previously testified under oath that the only way Officer, Al Officer Moot would have known that there was an open bottle is because you would have told her that it was open. If it was said to her, then yes, it would have been me. And you would agree that an empty bottle would be evidence of a DUI? Yes. And that's an open bottle that you created. 
Yes. You're the one who made it an open bottle. Objection, ask and answer. Overall. Yes. So you're the one who created the big evidence of the DUI. I don't know if she used it as evidence. In the car, you also found an insulin mug, correct? Correct. And you claimed that you smelled alcohol in the cup. Yes, ma'am. But you didn't test the contents of the cup. No, ma'am. And you didn't dump out the contents of the cup. No, ma'am. You just dumped out the contents of the sealed bottle. bottle. Yes, ma'am. So attorney Goodfellow wraps up her questioning and then the state gets back up to do some redirect. And one of the things that they highlight is that the bottle that Officer Oliver opened, poured out and put back into Calvin's car was never actually taken into evidence. It ended up being towed away with Calvin's car after he was taken to jail that night. What big evidence was in this car when it was being towed? The only evidence I know of is she mentioned the bottle of alcohol and the cup that was smelled like alcohol. Okay. Um, officer, was that big evidence to your decision to arrest the defendant? No. Okay. Let's talk about looking aside from this alcohol bottle. Let's stick to the facts. What signs of impairment led you to decide to arrest the defendant for driving under the influence? The signs of impairment that I noticed myself was the glossy red shot eyes, the slurred speech, confusion when looking for documents, the way the vehicle was driving on the roadway, the swerving back and forth, um, the obsession speaking about the phone and, and other things, um, and then the aggression. Now again, just a reminder, the defense's position is that taken into evidence or not, a police report noted the open bottle in Calvin's car and it was implied that the cup that was found in the middle console contained alcohol from that bottle. So both of these things were used to substantiate that DUI charge and led to Calvin being arrested. So the defense says taken into evidence or not, this still mattered. Okay, so that was day one. This trial was actually intended to just be a one day trial, but the state says they have two more witnesses. So the judge adjourned for the day and court will resume on Monday to finish this case off. But okay, now that you've gotten more insight to the charges and the case, I need you to weigh in and tell me what you think. I'll be back on Monday. A Tallahassee trial continuing to gain national attention. What was supposed to be a simple one day trial on Friday at the Leon County Courthouse going on for hours and now going until Monday. At the center of it all, a Tallahassee man accused of driving under the influence and driving with a suspended license. But in the courtroom on Friday, all both sides could talk about was accusations of misconduct by a Tallahassee police officer during that traffic stop in May of 2023. The trial in Tallahassee against this man, Calvin Riley, moving to day two. They, you need to proceed with whatever evidence you have right now. The case gaining national attention after an edited portion of the body camera footage during the May 2023 arrest went viral, which raised questions about a Tallahassee police officer, Kirsten Oliver's conduct during that traffic stop. Oliver watching in court that body camera footage. The state directly asking her if the vodka bottle in the car had anything to do with the DUI charge. No, because it was found post his arrest. On cross-examination, the defense painting Oliver as an inexperienced officer who mishandled the arrest. He's wearing glasses, correct? Yes. The, the day of, he was wearing glasses, correct? Yes. Today, you also testified that he had bloodshot eyes, correct? Correct. And you wrote a report on May 7th, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you swore to tell the truth in that report, correct? Yes, ma'am. And in that report, you never said anything about him having bloodshot eyes, correct? Okay. Yes, correct. You also did a deposition, is that correct? Correct. In which you were sworn to tell the truth? Yes, ma'am. And in that deposition, you also never said he had bloodshot eyes. Okay. During the redirect, prosecution Officer putting Oliver, Oliver's experience in context. Called Officer Muth to the scene. Was your intention to receive help? Yes. 
Were your intentions to make sure you were doing things properly? Correct. Was it a teaching moment for you? Absolutely. According to court testimony, an arrest report for Calvin Riley shows he was arrested on South Monroe Street in May of 2023. He was eventually charged with a DUI and driving with a suspended license. The case hadn't made any waves until a clip of that body camera footage in the case went viral this week. The Tallahassee Police Department says it would not release that body camera video until after the trial. An edited version posted online by Our Tallahassee, you can see Oliver is pouring liquid out of a sealed bottle from Riley's car. That's seen again in court, this time with some redactions ordered by the court. But that coming after strong words from the bench. The video had not been properly redacted by the state. The judge ordering it to be fixed, causing a delay that lasted more than an hour. The fact that we are wasting everyone's time, including the jurors and the court personnel, and are going to be here late into the night because of this is unacceptable. Oliver not getting on the stand until after 2 p.m. after both the defense and prosecution stopping multiple times for sidebars, objections, and other motions. We talked one-on-one -on -one with Riley, who denies the charges against him. What they want to portray or pursue is me being a disrespectful, belligerent black man disrespecting the law enforcement. But you have to ask yourself, why is he saying and arguing with this person like this? Because they don't know, and they don't know what I've been through with these police since I've been here. That trial expected to resume here at the Leon County Courthouse at 8.30 a.m. on Monday morning. I'll be here. The state is expected to call more witnesses. We're still waiting to see if the defense will call any witnesses. So it is expected to be a long day on Monday morning. For ABC 27 at the Leon County Courthouse in downtown Tallahassee. Alright guys, I watch this. Can't silence the people. Oh.